All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a specially scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. Tonight we have a handful of items in front of us, uh, one of which is the establishing of the capital assessment to the town for the year. And the second is maybe discussing a contract about a town administrator. And then thirdly, some minutes. And then finally, adjourning. We're going to have no executive session tonight because you know what? It's just not any fun. It's kind of like the Senate, except we tell the truth. That said, the first up tonight, if we could start with minutes of minutes of January 13th, uh, which are in front of us. And that has to do with some Plum Tree Road pollinator garden establishment, uh, finalizing a town administrator contract with a legal form. There was lots of yellow and red in that, but I think we got through it. And then we had senior center and SEMS updates and personnel committee updates. So is there a motion on the minutes of 113? Motion. Okay, there. Um, second. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? Um, no, but I'd like to ask and uh, continue when they were done with this vote. Okay. So motion's made and seconded for the minutes of 113, 2020. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Tom, you want to continue? Yeah, can you uh, please have all of the executive session minutes concerning the town administrator negotiations brought to our next meeting so we can right. vote on? Yep, yeah. that makes perfect sense. And we can do Correct that. Them up. Yeah, we want to get, yeah, we can do it in an open session. Yeah, and so to Tom's point, when there's turnover in either election or there's turnover in uh, appointed uh, bodies that are associated with executive session we like to make sure that the minutes are, are are voted on clean and we start with a, a new frame in the movie of the town of sunderland so we just move forward so that's what's going on with bringing our uh, minutes from uh, negotiations and believe me they were heated they were dis they were difficult they're really awkward and they're really simple so simple we can vote them in an open session so that said, Tom, that's a great point. We'll bring those forward. And yeah, we, we always try to keep it up to date. And I would right. just, right. I, I think, Scott, that it was just better to. Right, just get them up and done. Correct. And even when uh, uh, prior administrators had tended their notice or there were maybe carryovers, we always, we've all, we always yeah, we've kept always, them clean. We've always done it before yep. the yep. annual town meeting election. Yep. We always, we all, we'll do it again. Yep. But I mean, it's just. Because, I mean, there was a time where I, I bet you could still go into notes from 30 years ago and find executive session minutes that had never been released to the public privately. So. That's a really good point, Tom. It's all about transparency. All of it. We, we, we as, a, as a body, mm -hmm. use executive session only in its purest form. Contract negotiations, uh, things that we have to go into and I think as a body in our, our practice has been to ensure that the public knows why you're going into executive session and what the goal is coming out of executive session and closing the minutes out is that closure of those goals so but you know I, I'd like to qualify a little bit mm -hmm. is that sometimes we can't correct tell people why we're going to executive session correct that is true yeah, we reach, we, we reach, as has been told by town council, you guys do a, a lot more than other towns. Well, the publisher of the record and I had a very interesting <laughs> discussion <laughs> one night where I told him that I always thought he had a reputable newspaper, but now it seems I could buy it at the checkout corner <sighs> at the grocery oh, store because oh. of it. Well, he, 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 had the, he had allowed a report a reporter to report something on an executive session which he, he he basically said somebody was in a meeting, so we were talking about something. And he says, well, "Where did that come from? You, right. A, we didn't say that. That's right. And you wrote it. Yep. So how do you write stuff by somebody peeking around the corner and seeing somebody that just happened to be standing there? Fair point. The, and, and and the guy had nothing to do, but you're reporting that we were in an executive session about it. I said, so if that's not tabloid journalism, you tell me what it's it is. Close, isn't it? Well, unfortunately, we were at somebody's house when I told them that. Yeah. So I was told that that's probably not the best place to have that discussion. But, but that's why Oz keeps us honest. Hey. I hear you. <laughs> I completely Gotta stay agree. consistent, right? 
Completely agree. <clears throat> so the other agenda item tonight is um, town administrator contract. No, that can wait. So, <laughs> sorry. Uh, set this FY21 capital assessment. So we passed a number of years ago uh, capital stabilization capital stabilization override. The first year uh, that capital stabilization override was in place, voted by the town and town meeting first, then town of the election, allowed for an assessment of we raised $100,000 to go to the capital stabilization fund. Subsequent years, that can be raised by a maximum of 2.5% if deemed necessary. And in the past, three years, we have actually raised that by two and a half percent. If in the event the capital stabilization uh, fund is funded adequately, the board can take no action or can vote <coughs> a lower value. This year in front of us, we have a capital stabilization at two and a half percent would raise our capital stabilization assessment for the recap to $115,969.53, that's from the accountant, or 2.5% above last year. So as we go about this, this is part of our recap work, and is there any discussion about not raising it by the 2.5% that we're allowed? No, in, in my opinion, um, this this capital allows us to actually help offset the cost of expenditures of capital that we know are going to happen every year. And and I haven't checked yet. But besides the price of TVs that seem to be going down, <laughs> most other capital, <laughs> at, i.e., we need fire truck metal. for a hundred. Yeah, right. Fire truck. You think about it, Scott. Yep. When fire the last fire, fire truck yep. that we bought yep. was like three hundred and twenty-five, three hundred thirty thousand totally dollars. Yep. That was like ten, eleven years ago. Correct, Mr. Sh Mr. Schmiel. That's what Mr. Schmiel. Yep. Now Mr. Rosenberger is charging us uh, five hundred nine thousand mm -hmm. plus closing costs. Right. Think of that. Mm -hmm. That's not. That's not a. a that's one truck's life. Yeah, 10 years. Right. Ten, uh, 20 years is the life of a truck or so. Um, and we're, we're spending a half a million dollars on a singular piece of fire equipment. And I would say I don't think anybody in the town can doesn't want a fire truck, right? Right. So that's what it costs. A truck, buy a highway truck. You're going to spend $200,000 for a highway it, truck. It's in the capital budget for 2021 year ahead, and it's 220. Yeah, yeah, for for a fire truck. Right. So we know there's expenses, and and this helps us. This helps budget for those expenses. So mm -hmm. I, I, it's it's fiscally sound process <clears throat> to achieve. Absolutely. Okay. David, yep. I agree. It would be nice if we didn't have to, but we got a lot of stuff to spend money on just to keep things from falling apart. So an observation as a member of the capital uh, planning committee and someone who advocated along with this board for uh, this stabilization override, we had plenty of discussions about how the demand for capital as it was, as it was defined, and that's buildings of, building repairs of a value, buildings of value, rolling assets of value, things with a life cycle, not microphones, but something different with a longer right. life cycle, always interrupted the operating budget, mm -hmm. right? They kind of, like, you, you worked the sucker holes of maybe having a little bit of free cash and maybe you could spend it that way. This is, I want to say the fourth year, and I can do the math back, but I think it's the fourth year of having this as established. And 115, 116, we'll call it 116, isn't, isn't, anywhere close to covering the capital requests. When you look at the capital budget, the okay. capital requests, but at least it establishes that pattern that says there's a funding source for. Yep. And it's separate and apart from 
labor and expenses on the operating side, which has some of its own volatility, but at least it has this um, basis to start the discussion. So I think that that's a good thing. And, so and like we say, it takes some of the noise out of it. And takes it helps the noise you out of it. Exactly. The right. Process better. Right. You're not relying. You're not relying on <clears throat> windfalls and going. Oh my God, we can right. buy have to do blank this, this year. Right. right. Or this broke. Right. Oh no. So it it continues to be the baseline for. Uh, solid program and that program it's going to take years it's only a couple of years in the rears right now but it's going to take years for it to become a norm and that's a good thing Absolutely. so that that said uh, is any more discussion uh, on the motion to raise uh, on the recap 115,969.53 for capital stabilization yeah. motion Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, three to zero. And if the accountant's got that wrong, he's gone. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. Next. Um, <laughs> Next. Next. <laughs> so, I appreciate the opportunity to continue working with the board on the capital assessment. Let's talk about town administrator. To uh, our left is uh, Jeff Kravitz. He was our uh, choice uh, and we entered um, difficult negotiations over the course of the last nearly three weeks. And Oz just got the camera panned in. Every red light zoomed, Close zoomed up. in on Jeff. Um, so we have in front of us tonight uh, was, uh, is a town administrator's contract. This has been uh, passed through uh, to and through town council, uh, works specifically with Dave Jenkins. Uh, there are a couple of oddities in the language. He used the word oddities, and then he cleaned those oddities up as they were carryovers from old, <laughs> old contracts. Um, that said, uh, this is the layout, the framework for a three-year uh, work agreement, minimum, uh, three-year work agreement, excuse me, with uh, Jeff Kravitz. And Jeff comes from the town of Amherst as economic development coordinator. Director. 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 Director's good. Coordinator. Director. And we get rid of all of the yellow spaces, red lines, and underlines. And so we have something clean here tonight to sign. I was um, charged by the board to negotiate uh, with uh, Jeff. And as has been noted in a couple of prior meetings, we recessed to executive session so I could update the board. A couple of um, those updates include salary and duration, pretty straightforward. Uh, there were some give and takes with respect to uh, Jeff uh, and continuing ed. And continuing ed was, was as most things, has, has gone up in, in price. And it's not extravagant, gone, going from two to three and one to two, it's not a big deal. Uh, there are, uh, there is a language in here that allows Jeff to consult on the side in case he just decides he wants to work for, you know, someone who can help Sunderland. Um, that said, as long as there's no conflicts, the town council was fine with that. And the rest of it is specific to um, some exceptions of the benefits bylaw, and that has to do with coming in with a little bit of extra time. Thanks. Uh, a little bit of extra time and extending some extra sick days uh, or, or, or personal days to, for someone with a young family. Any questions, concerns? So, so everybody knows that there, the state through Master in the Law Chapter 41, Section 108N specifies who can have contracts. So um, the state has, under the Master in the Law, Chapter 41, 108, and I think it's O is is the tax collector. But So O tells you how far that you go goes all down. Way down. Yeah. But there's chief of police can have a contract, fire chief can have contracts, town administrators can have contracts. People say, why? Why would you give a contract to someone? Sure. Um, and I, I would say that if anybody reads the newspapers, um, 
board of selectmen change, uh, board of board of select board members select board change, change. Yep. Um, and there has to be there has to be an understanding between a working relationship between the board a board and a town administrator and a treasurer and a police chief and that is why we enter into a contract uh, into contracts um, this this contract has it it does not repeat does not have a uh, uh, article that t says that if the uh, uh, town administrator decides to leave or we decide that we no longer want the town administrator that we're going to pay the town administrator a three-year severance package good point those are those are but those are important but those, yeah. but those Close. are i know what is but, the second but, but those but those are those important things that we talk about in a contract and that that get get us get us caught um and and i since I've been a selectman, I believe in the contracts because it, it's no different than our union contracts that we have mm -hmm. with, with our police and in, in the schools. It, it defines our, our working conditions. It de de describes our what what our expectations are in both directions. There there there's both in a contract. Contrary to what some may think, but a contract works both in both directions, and 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 I personally believe. That it that is good business to have those expe expectations written down on paper. Jeff knows where we stand. We know where he stands, and we don't have to revisit this again. We can we can we don't have to discuss the business relationship mm -hmm. going forward. Um, and Fair. one thing we talk about with the chief of police is that the chief of police is expected to put in X amount of hours a week. The chief, the chief of police in our town, runs a 24/7 business. Mm -hmm. If he finds it important, he may want to talk to his three shifts. So he may start at six o'clock in the morning some days. He may end his day at six o'clock, or so that so that he can talk to his first shift, his second shift, and his third shift officers. Mm -hmm. He may come in on a Saturday. No one knows that. Conversely. Our town administrator there's a, has many responsibilities, as Cindy will attest. Okay, it means coming to our it means coming to our select board meeting. It means coming to finance committee meetings. It means it may it may mean going to uh, Springfield to go to a PBTA meeting because although Sunderland is small by numbers, we we had like 91,000 uh, riders last year or the year before. So our, while we may only have 3,500 residents approximately Mr. town clerk why we have we we, <laughs> we, we have we have oh, a much man. larger proportion right. because of of say in because of the number of riders that we have yeah. um as jeff will soon know with a budget he he may put in longer hours he may he may want he may want to talk to the uh, the police officer that work on the third shift to get a feel for the town, he may he might he may want to go to school committee meetings to to, to frontier it because now we're part of a regional. He may want to know see know the uh, superintendent and actually see the school committee who are making. So so we don't. There's an expectation. We have an expectation for amount of time that the job takes. Probably unrealistic expectation, um, and and. But if someone come, comes in, well, he's not there at eight o'clock. Well, there may be a good reason. Correct. Um, but we can find out. Mm -hmm. But but just so you know, he may come in some days at nine um, or eight thirty. Put us laid out in our agreement, and that's that's why that's why it's it's so important to do those those things. Yeah, you raise you raise a really good point, Tom, with respect to the 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 uh, framework. Uh, the reason it's called an agreement for employment is expectations come both ways from the st from from the in this case here the town administrator and then the expectations of the board need to be aligned and need to be codified and in that in that codification um, we end up with some stability the town not we not the board the town ends up with stability you know Jeff interviewed particularly well 
Uh, we had three really good finalists, and uh, now we're going to see how it all plays out. You're going to be our fourth <laughs> town administrator. Or so. Or so. 4.65. 4. <laughs> Maybe we should start a portrait gallery. 4.6, yeah, picture gallery. I like it. <laughs> nice. So that, that said, um, and I appreciate, Tom, the dialogue around why you actually go about a contract. It's like no company hires areas. a CEO without a contract. Correct. Why yes. you go about this. Well, some, but some people ask, why yep. do you have a contract? Yep. Well, to me, it's, and again, I think I explained why I think it's yep. important. I, I, and I, in, I, I would say you'd, you'd have a, it was an awful tough time trying to have a town administrator without a contract. Correct. I would think. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Or one that, and again, I, I, I personally think that um, your, your town administrator is not going to try something crazy because he has a contract. Um, I hope. Uh, word, words, words to live by. <laughs> But, but at the same time, I, I also think that a board, a, a board of selectmen um, should not put undue. I, I, you know, a, a town administrator to the south of us is retiring after 16 years in Hadley and about the same number of years in uh, a Deerfield. Mm -hmm. uh, David, David, um, Mr. Nixon. I, I think. I think he he's the epitome of a town administrator. He he kept things. A he's a town administrator of a five member board of selectmen. Mm -hmm. That's difficult. Yes, it is. Um, he he it, his the community is a fast paced a very fast paced community because of all the things going on. Mm -hmm. But David didn't get anybody thrown in jail. Yep. Um, a number one. Jeffrey, Notice we don't want to go to jail. No, you may, you may want to talk to the town clerk about that because the town. <laughs> She's got the key. Town clerk, whenever the town clerk calls the state, the, the first question to the town clerk are you and the selectman not getting along? Um, that happened once. It was once enough. Yeah, that's um, all it takes. But but he he gave he gave he gave good he gave good counsel to us his uh, his board and. Um, he had answers, and he kept the town moving in the in the right direction. And I think those are things that um, that are important. And and he had answers for people, and he had answers for his board. And that's that's what a, a good town administrator does. Um, and he listens listens to the people, uh, the residents that come in. I was just going to say he brings perspective, and that's you have to have that and, to all those decisions. And and I, I I'm going to say I want to say this. Um, and I said it many times before, the town administrator works for the board. If you have, so it's, it's hard, if, if, if you're something that you don't like, and don't blame it on the, on the town administrator, you blame it on the board. Because the, he, the, the town administrator answers to the board. Um, and and I, 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 I think that's the most important thing. Don't get mad at the town administrator. Get mad at the board. Bring your concerns to the board. Um, and, and sometimes that's, that's forgotten. Fair. Absolutely fair, Tom. David? You all good? I'm good. Yep. So since this is a, a, a vote to approve the contract, and a point. We have to do two things, right? Mm -hmm. Enter into the contract and a point. Right? Um well yes. Um first sentence. A motion to a point. Sorry. Okay, we can do that. Right. I think appointing is the first one. Right, then yep. accept that's fine. And then and the then accept the accept the agreements of the contract. Yep. <clears throat> The, there's some dates missing in the first sentence. If you want to fill fill that in, yep, uh, fill this in. And there's on um, section three under term. It starts it starts with commencing on February. We're going to talk about that as well. Good. So All I right. think I think a point would be the first order of business. Is there a motion to the board to appoint uh, Jeffrey Kravitz uh, as a town administrator? Uh, motion of the town of Sunderland. Sure. Town of Sunderland. Second. Yes. Any random town. <laughs> Chatham. 
Chatham. The Chatham. Yarmouth. He, he it's summer. It's summer. It's got, in, in summers. You get, you get a hell of a lot more in uh, I know. Chatham. I know. Don't, don't taunt him now. <laughs> okay. There's a motion made uh, and seconded to a point for the town of Sunderland. Jeff Kravitz. Uh, Jeffrey. Jeff. Jeff. Jeff Kravitz. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kravitz. Uh, for the town administrator's position. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <clears throat> Congratulations. Second, uh, there's a contract in front of us. And the contract has open dates at the top, as contracts do. And then again, as I said, in section three down below, uh, commencing on February. So since you've been appointed, Jeff, and congratulations, and thank you. Or sympathies, depending yeah, on how Or sympathies. <laughs> and, again, and again, more importantly, thank you. Yeah. Um, the question on section three, can we talk about start date? So commencing on, and it says February blank 2020. What are you thinking about a start date? Um, I, so oh, I negotiations, <laughs> red dots. <laughs> um, my resignation from Amherst is effective uh, January 31st. Okay. So the earliest available, I believe, would be February 3rd. Okay. Um, certainly wouldn't object if you want to give me a day or two in between, but that's what the weekends are for too. So <laughs> okay. I'm happy. I'm excited to start on the third. So as contract language under section three term, the sentence reads, term of the agreement shall be period commencing on blank, February, excuse me, February blank. We just plug the third in. Yep. Okay. Right. Noon time. Noon. 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 Okay, so February 3rd, 2020. And at the okay. top, the very opening sentence. Uh, February 3rd is okay, motion of the board? Yes. Yeah. Second? Mm -hmm. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. Okay. And at the top, the agreement's made entered into town, and it's on this day of, and that's today, right? right? That's the contract vote date, yes. right? So mm -hmm. the contract vote date is going to be 120, 2020, correct? 121. Sorry. My watch is, I, I got an analog watch for Christmas, and sorry about that. Anyway, so it's 121. Kind of People who watched me struggle through that calendar a week, two weeks ago, like, what the hell day is he talking about? So no one for updates. Yeah, you know, we, got, we got to fix that calendar. Yeah, it's coming up. So I can bring a nice tutu calendar. In. Ooh, I like it. Franklin it's just, County. That's this weekend. It, yeah, but no, it's a Franklin County tutu calendar. Oh, okay. I'm so still looking for pictures of the Sunderland uh, train station. Do we have some in the train station? No. I think we had trolleys. We had trolleys. Are you sure we didn't have one over by Cranberry Pond? Hmm. Ah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. I stumped. I stumped. I don't think the there was a trolley. What about fairy calendars? Can we get fairies across Deerfield? We could show. We do have fairies. See, mm -hmm. see. I fairy like road. Mm -hmm. So we have Fair in front fairies. of us the the opening right. sentence. Exactly. The opening sentence. The agreement entered into on into this. 21st day of January 2020. Correct? Okay. And the duration is, it's a three-year contract and it gives us out to 2023. Okay. Is there a motion to accept? Motion. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero. Jeff Kravitz, thanks very much. Oh boy. Thank you. The train, ferry, the trolley. Right. We haven't figured it out yet, but some of this is a historical calendar that shows it. I asked the town clerk earlier today to come in and get you sworn in so you can represent us. So. I do. All right. I have um, stuff for you to sign off on that I'll email you. And once you get your uh, email, Cindy right. uh, will. We can do it that way. I'll send it to yeah. Cindy. Yeah. First thing you do is fix the computer. Second is, no, yeah. no. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. Thank you, Wendy. Thanks so oh, much. Okay. Thanks so much, TC. Okay, so we have one of these uh, clean to sign, and we can use that and uh, take that downstairs. We have no other business today, uh, with the exception of uh, select board. No. Done. No other business today. Capital nope. assessments are raised. Minutes are approved. Town administrators contract is signed. And Oz, are you interested in us adjourning? Yes. <laughs> yes. Is that a motion? Myself. I make a motion to Sorry. adjourn. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.